Artists Newton and Helen Mayer Harrison have been pioneers in the eco-art movement since the early 1970s. Both are professors in residence at UCSC with a digital arts and new media graduate program. Over the past 40 years, the Harrisons have worked closely with biologists, ecologists, architects, urban planners, and other artists to initiate dialogues and present solutions which support biodiversity and community development. Part one was about the deforestation that happened around Tibet. Then they'd start to understand Tibet as the High, as the sense of the high ground in a physical, geogra geographical sense, and that became water levels and how water level effect, will affect the entire world, but they focused on Tibet. They've made Tibet to be like this bruise. They've used the word bruise, and that to me is really powerful. That's Mark Shunny, co-curator of the exhibit, The Harrison Studio, on mixing, mapping, and territory. The exhibit includes a series of large maps of Tibet and the European Peninsula and its waterways, as well as images from their limited edition book, The Seventh Lagoon. The exhibit runs through March 15th at the Cezanon Gallery on the UCSC campus and opens this Wednesday at 6 p.m. The exhibit includes public discussion, extensive mapping and documentation of their artistic process, and the focus on global warming. That's what we see, I think, again and again in, in relationship to this. It can be challenged by scientists in saying they're over-exaggerating the problem. But really, as I get to know them today, it's like he, they're in a headspace in their 80s of saying, OK, we know that this problem exists. There's no more doubting it. It's, it's there. And what do we do from, from that point forward? So I think some of their exaggeration is just continually trying to push us as a, as a society it's specifically in the states, like that, that this is true. This is something that we need to confront. And now we need to understand, well, how do we create solutions? The Seventh Lagoon series, started by the Harrisons in 1974 and completed in 1984, examines the lagoon cycle. This is the second of the Harrisons' works on the effects of global warming, from which future works develop. This series explores a 30-year-old prophecy on the rising of the oceans. The Lagoon series took them out side of this country and they started looking at third world countries and understanding it from in this relationship from the perspective of a fisherman so this begins with a fisherman and concludes with a fisherman it takes us through the different challenges of the landscape that this fisherman sits within on one wall is a series of large drawings and paintings of the body of water that makes up the salt and sea each image has a series of writings by helen mayer harrison on top what they then did when they drop into a, a later lagoon is they started replicating a lagoon in an artificial context. So they created tubs of water and started testing how the ecosystem of a crab can, can work within a man-made structure. Artist Newton and Helen Mayer Harrison's work displays a combination of traits of historian, diplomat, ecologist, investigator, and arts activist. Their work proposes solutions based on their extensive real-world studies of the changing environment. This is the, uh, the, the second lagoon where we're starting to understand how the Harrisons translated this experience that took them outside of the country. And they came back, and in San Diego, they started creating these ecosystems in tubs. And this was the study of the crab. And here we have images of both Helen and Newton as developing a relationship with how crabs within a communal situation exist. If you'd like more information on the Harrison Studio, go to art.ucsc.edu. I'm Kirby Scudder.